Good morning, church. As we wrapped up last year, spending the entire year looking at end time events, and we went through quite a bit of revelation, of the seven last plagues, close of probation, National Sunday Law, and we ended with the three angels' messages. This morning, I want to invite you to turn to our scripture reading there in Matthew 28. Matthew chapter 28. As we begin this year, focusing on evangelism. This is a year of evangelism. Did you know that? Yeah. Every year is a year of evangelism. Amen. Amen. We're going to look at evangelism, especially in the book of Acts this year, and do our very best to do as much evangelism as, we, as, we're, as, as we're going to see. It is our great commission. There in Matthew 28, verse, verses 18, where it says, And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I command you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. Let's pray, shall we? Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you very much for a new year. We thank you very much for this great opportunity to be co-workers with you. I ask that you take away any distractions and that your Holy Spirit may abide in, in every single mind. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. What a blessing to begin the year with a baptism and a baby dedication. It, I'm just so happy that this church is an active church and a growing church. Amen. So there, as, as we looked and read in Matthew 28, the Great Commission, why, the next question might be a little silly, but then if, if I were to ask, why do we exist as a church? What is the purpose for us as a church? What would your answer be? Evangelism, okay. Any, glorify God. Anything else? Strengthen ourselves. Yes, we are the family of God. Anything else? Why do we exist as a Seventh-day Adventist church? To be God's witnesses. Very good. If, if you look at your, 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 your um, bulletin, I'm sorry, if you look at your bulletin, the meditation in the back, there from Acts of the Apostles, there from Acts of the Apostles, page 9, you, you notice that some of it is underlined and some of it isn't. And part of that is I'm going to leave for homework to memorize the underlined part. And those, and we'll see next week, we'll see next week, those who will be able to recite the underlying part next Sabbath. Okay, so that's your, that's your homework. But there it says the church is God's appointed agency for the salvation of men. It was organized for service and its mission is to carry the gospel to the world. From the beginning it has been God's plan that through his church shall be reflected to the, shall be reflected to the world his fullness and his sufficiency the members of the church those whom he has called out of darkness into his marvelous light are to show forth his glory the church is the is the repository of the riches of the grace of Christ and through the church will eventually be made manifest even to the principalities and powers in heavenly places the final and full display of the love of God this is why we exist as a church. 
Did you notice a, re a repeated word in, in this quotation? It kept on repeating and repeating and repeating. The church is God's appointed agency for the salvation of men. It was organized for service, and its mission is to carry the gospel to the world. From the beginning, it has been God's plan that through his church shall be reflected to the world his fullness and his sufficiency. Have you caught on what the word is yet? Church. church. The members of the church, those whom he has called out of darkness and into his marvelous light, are to show forth his glory. The church is the repository of riches of the grace of Christ and through the church will eventually be made manifest even the principalities and powers in heavenly places. It is through the church. It is not the work of one, but the work of all. It's not the work of one, but the work of, of all of us. It, does, it, it, it doesn't say through the ministers, or through the elders, or through Bible workers, but through the church. Through the church. And that's what the word commission means. See, com you see, the word commission is made up of two words, a prefix co with the word mission. And co means together, together. If I were to say, we're going to operate, but let's, if I add the word co with it, cooperate, that means we're going to operate how? Together. Let's cooperate, right? You never say to yourself, I'm going to cooperate um, in cleaning the kitchen. No, right? You go with a family and say, let's cooperate. That means you work together. You work together. So co plus mission means a mission carried out together. So whose mission is this great commission? It's, the, it's ours. The Great Commission is our mission in cooperation with God. In cooperation with God. And be, because it can be overwhelming to think that one person can share the gospel to the world. Even, even, over, even overwhelming for one person to share the gospel even in just one city. It can be overwhelming. But it is not your mission to take the gospel to the world. It is our commission to take the gospel to the world. And there in Matthew 28, if you have your Bibles there open, we're going to look at the context of the Great Commission. Why do we have a Great Commission? What's so great about it? What's so great about it is the beginning of chapter 28. Chapter 28 begins with a resurrection and ends with the Great Commission. There, Matthew chapter 28, verse 1, it says, Now after the Sabbath, as it had been, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. And his appearance was like, like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. The guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who has been crucified. And what does verse 6 begin with? He is not here he is not here the fact that Jesus resurrected friends is the reason why we have a great commission is the reason why we have a great commission. this is what sets Christianity apart this is what sets Christianity apart from any other religion in the world because any religious leader can die but not any religious religious leader can resurrect himself and because Christ, and today, and maybe, I don't know if they still are, but I'm sure there are many people in past times who have been looking for the body of Jesus. Why? Because by finding a body, this proves Christianity. And everything that the Bible teaches and stands for, and everything that Jesus says. But because they can search and search and search, and they will keep finding an empty tomb, 
Christianity, friends, is true. Because Jesus resurrected sets Christianity apart, and that is why we have a great commission. Because we have a risen Savior, not a sleeping Savior in the tomb. The reason why there is a great commission is because there was a resurrection. And if you turn to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it's so important that even Paul picked it up. And Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14, that without a resurrection, our faith is in vain. If Jesus has not resurrected, we can go home right now and forget the Sabbath. But here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14 through 19, the Bible says, And if Christ had not been raised, then our preaching is vain. Your faith also is vain. Moreover, we are even found to be false witnesses of God because we testify against God that He raised Christ whom He did not raise, if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has, ra has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You are still in your sins. But those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. And if we have hope in Christ, in this life only, we are of all men most to be pitied. Amen. Amen. If Christ has not risen from the grave, from the dead, we are the most to be pitied. Not just ourselves, but even those who have died from beginning, from, from, from Abel, have no hope of a, of a resurrection. Every single person that is asleep in Jesus has hope in Jesus because Jesus resurrected because of Jesus' resurrection. When, when Jesus was in the Mount of Transfiguration, there were two people that came to visit him. Do we know who those two people were? Moses and who? And Elijah. And they were strengthening Jesus to carry through the mission. Because if Jesus had not carried through the mission, what would have happened with Moses and Elijah? They were in heaven on the credits that what? Jesus was going to fulfill his mission and be resurrected. If Jesus had not fulfilled his mission, Moses and Elijah would have to come back down and die and stay dead forever. And the plan of salvation would have crumbled. So I can imagine them encouraging Jesus to fulfill the mission. And not just for themselves, but for all those who would continue to follow in their footsteps. The Great Commission flows out of the fact that Jesus resurrected. That an actual man from Nazareth walked on earth, was nailed to a Roman cross, and was raised on the third day. And that's why, friends, that's why you have the Great Commission and the disciples in the book of Acts go like fire spreading the news. That Jesus, whom they followed, whom they ate with, whom they slept with, whom they probably even bathed with in the river, that man is alive and is in heaven. And there begins the Great Commission in the book of Acts. And we will spend time in the book of Acts this year. But we're, we are beginning by looking at this Great Commission. So returning to Matthew 28, we're going to look at three things this morning. We're going to look at, there are three alls in the Great Commission, there in Acts chapter 28. And sometimes we think it's, it, the work is just too great, it's too much. But Jesus reminds us there, in, in these great, <clears throat> these, these three alls. If you read from verse 18 through 20, I will give you two minutes to read Matthew 28, 18 through 20 and see if you can catch there are three alls in those three verses. Okay. 
Okay, does someone know what the first all is? All power, all authority. Okay, what's the second one? All nations and? And all things, and all things. Jesus here begins, before he even tells them what the responsibility is, what he's gonna ask them to do, before he gives them their homework, he lets them know all authority, they're in verse 18, has been given to me. And notice, in two places, in heaven and on earth. That means he has all power where? Everywhere. In heaven and on earth. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And Jesus wants to let his disciple know and let us know, you and I, that before he sends us out, before he gives us our assignment, he has all power. He has all the resources that we need. So if we're thinking, well, I don't, I, I don't know how to do this project. I don't know how to do evangelism here, or, or I don't, I'm not sure how to raise this money. Jesus is reminding us, I have all the resources. That's why I'm sending you out. I have all the resources, all the power on heaven and on earth, I have them. If we, if we can go to our, our, our reference there on, uh, on our PowerPoint, I didn't pick up the clicker, so if you can do it for me. There from Christian Service, page 235. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Here it says, Christian Service, page 235. Courage, energy, and perseverance they must possess. Though apparent impossibilities obstruct their way, by His grace they are to go forward. Notice, though, what kind of impossibilities? Apparent. Though it may appear to be something like impossible. Maybe, maybe you have a, a mission project that's been in your mind. There was a young adult that talked to Pastor Austin and I of a good mission project here in Cleveland. And some people may think that's impossible. Though apparent impossibilities, they just appear. You know why they appear? Because with Christ, all things are possible. And Christ has all power on heaven and on earth. And we have access to, Je to Jesus Christ and that power. Though apparent impossibilities obstruct their way, by His grace they are to go forward. Go forward. Instead of, de instead of deploring difficulty, they are called upon to surmount them. They are to despair of nothing and to hope for everything. With the golden chain of His matchless love, Christ has bound them to the throne of God. It is, it is His purpose that the highest influence in the universe emanating from the source of all power shall be theirs. Did you just catch that sentence? Amen and amen. I'll say amen. Wow. It is His purpose that the highest influence in the universe emanating from the source of all powers shall be theirs. Who is, who is the theirs? That's us. We have access to that power. They are to have power to resist evil, power that neither earth nor death nor hell can master, power that will enable them to overcome as Christ overcame. Amen. Amen. You see, this is why, and, and I can't wait till we get to the book of Acts. This, this is why the disciples claimed that power and did the miracles and preaching that they did. Because they had in their mind where Christ told them, all authority and power has been given to me on heaven and on earth. And how can God's power be manifested? It can be manifested through healing, through softening of the heart of someone with a cold heart. It can be manifested from delivering, delivering somebody from depression, ar arranging meetings of people. Because Christ has all power and authority and we have access to Christ, friends. That's why then we go to all nations. We go everywhere. 
And it continues saying, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Everywhere we go, friends, should be a mission trip. Everywhere we go. And I can be the first one to say that I have not always thought that. Everywhere you go, have you thought about that? That's why we have glow tracks on the table every first Sabbath for you to pick up a pack of 100 and wherever you go, you are a missionary for Jesus. Whether you go grocery shopping, whether you cut your hair, whether you go to the gym, uh, visit someone. I was, I was so happy and uh, when my family, we were in Barnes & Noble one time, one evening, and, no, I'm sorry, we were at the Cheesecake Factory in, in Arlington, and right next to it is Barnes & Noble. And while we were waiting to be called, we went over to Barnes & Noble, looked around, and Danny says, hey, I, I have a glow track. Let me go give it to the cashier. Praise the Lord. That should have been me. That should have been me setting the example. But instead, my son is, hey, you know, I got some glow tracks. While we're waiting for our table, let's hand them out. And I, I know that Pastor Austin, when he went with the school to the state fair, while they're having fun in the state fair, they're passing out glow tracks and spreading the word of God. Amen. Everywhere we go, we are missionaries. That's why in Matthew 24, 14, Matthew 24, 14, Jesus there tells us that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the world in the whole world as a testimony to our nations and then the end will come. And that's part of the first angel's message. Isn't it not? There where, where the first angel says and that John saw another angel flying in, in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to be preached to every tribe, tongue, people, to everywhere. Everywhere. To all nations. This gospel commission eliminates national boundaries. And men and women of all nations find themselves members of one great brotherhood. Christianity destroys all berries of race, friends. Nationalities, societies, economi e economies, and even social custom. Because we are going everywhere to all people, we cannot leave anything out and we teach all things. They all line up. They all line up. God says, all power has been given to me. And you have access to that power. And because we have access to the power, then we can go anywhere because we have access to, Jesus, to the power of Christ. And because we go to all places, we cannot just go to all places and just share something. But we share all things with people. Everything. The acceptance of the gospel of Jesus involves the action of the intelligence. Only an intelligent Christian can be a real Christian. The, the, do you know why? Only an intelligent Christian can be a real Christian. You see, Christianity isn't just a set of ideas that you put your faith with no foundation, with no resources. You know, kind of like believing in Santa Claus and you just believe in Santa Claus because you believe in Santa Claus. But there's no evidence, there's no resources. But being a Christian, friends, is an intelligent faith, an intelligent Religion. There, in, if you join me in Second Peter, Peter tells us that in, that Christianity is an intelligent faith. There, in Second Peter chapter three. Second Peter, chapter three. And this is why it's important that we share all things, and we and in sharing all things also includes reading all of scripture. Second Peter chapter three, verse 10. Verse 10 through verse 18. 
It says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in which the heavens will pass away and with a roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat and the earth and its work will be burned up. And some have taken a theology just on that one verse. And it continues on saying in verse 11, Since all these things are to be destroyed in the way, in this way, what sort of people are you to be in holy conduct and goodness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. But according to his promise, we are looking for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Verse 14, Therefore, beloved, since you look for these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace, spotless and blameless. And regard the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him, wrote to you. And notice verse 16. As also in all his letters, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which the untaught and, and unstable distort, as they do also the rest of the scriptures to their own destruction. See here, Peter is letting us know there are some that distort the scriptures. That they distort not just Paul, but even the rest of the scriptures to their own destruction. That's why Christianity it needs to be an intelligent faith. You study it out. You read it. You compare scripture with scripture. Here a little, there a little. Verse 17, You therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, be on your guard so that you are not carried away by the errors of unprincipled men and fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. You see, teaching all things involves teaching all things. <laughs> We cannot leave anything, anything out. And I hope and pray that what you hear from this pulpit, whether it be myself or Pastor Austin or an elder, you don't just take it without studying it also for yourself. Without adequate instruction in the great vital truth of the gospel, there can be no true religious life. But at the same time, it is the love of Christ that subdues the hearts. Without genuine love for Christ, the doctrines and forms of religion lose their meaning and their value. But yet nothing is to be omitted. It is not for anyone to declare that some of Christ's teachings can be left out. It is all of God's teachings. That's why the Great Commission, Jesus there says, make disciples and teach them all things. All things. So Christ's mission for us is to make disciples. You see, that should be the church's mission. There, it's, it's the first thing that Jesus says. After reminding us that he is, has all the power and all authority, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. There are plenty of ways that we can make disciples and be creative in making disciples. But the, the main objective of the church is to make disciples, friends. We can make disciples through our wonderful school that we have. We can make disciples through the clinic that we have. We can make disciples through Dorcas that we have. We can make disciples through many different ways. Through the Thanksgiving dinner that we had at Thanksgiving uh, uh, Day or Thanksgiving Eve. There are plenty of ways in which we can think 
and come up with. But the primary goal is to make disciples. The primary goal is to make disciples. You see, a doctor wouldn't be a good doctor if a patient goes to him and the doctor sees that he is sick and has the flu and says, okay, we'll just go home and I hope you feel better. <laughs> but doesn't give him anything to get better. Or the patient goes and maybe he has a broken bone. You see, we are to, to, to serve, yes, each other, the community, provide their people's needs. Absolutely. It is, a Christ, it is the method of Christ. But at the end, after Jesus met their needs, he invited them and said, come and follow me. Come and follow me. So whatever method we, we do, whatever method we have, I know that, that there is a church here in the, in the DFW that there is a group of men that go out cycling. It's a small group of men that go out cycling and they invite other men from the community, but it started from the church. And from that group of men that go out cycling, praise the Lord, men are entering into the gospel truth into the church. They're having fun cycling, but they spend time and they, and they talk about God, they, 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 they talk about the Bible. And at first, men, other men may not be interested, but because they love cycling, they okay, they, might, they, they may put up with it. But at the same time, the church men are praying, are praying on how they can be a light to others. Our mission is to make disciples of all the world. And more specific for us, to make disciples here in Cleburne. From here in Cleburne. We can make disciples of Christ because we have all powers, which is through Christ. We go through all people and we teach all things. And we teach all things. This is the great commission found in Matthew chapter 28. And I want you to remember that even though you may feel that you are alone, God is with you. And you need to ask him, Lord, I feel alone as I go to this house and maybe visit, or as I share this glow track, or as I give this study. God reminds us that all power has been given to him, and he is willing for us to use it. But we have to claim that power in order for us to use it. As we begin this year, I want to make a simple appeal, real simple. I was gonna say, how about, how many of us would be willing for one person to bring in one person? But then I thought, no, I will make it even easier. How many families would be willing to win one soul? per family, just one. Not individually, but just one family. You know, sometimes there's a, a, a family may just consist of two people or three or four, depending on the size of your family. But just a family, by December of this year, you would have brought one soul to the foot of Jesus Christ. How many are willing to, to give it a shot? Now, Keep your hands up. How many are willing to give it a shot? Now those who have your hands up, okay, to give it a shot. We just read there that all the power of heaven is on our side. All the power of heaven is on our side. So whatever you may lack, God will provide. God will provide. You can put your hands down. And I want to thank you and I want to challenge every single one. Pastor Austin and I will do our very best to help anyone, anyone. I have set my own personal goals for this year. My own personal goals for this year. Austin, I'm sure, is, is considering or thinking and setting his own personal goals. But I just want to invite your friend. This is not my mission. It is our co-mission. It is the church's mission to work together in the bringing of souls. 
There is no way that one person can do it alone. Even Jesus used his disciples and sent out even 70 and more for the commission of his work. For the commission of his work. So I just want to invite you for every single family to just pray in your hearts. Beginning today and saying, Lord, I raise my hand. I don't know who you want me to influence. But whoever it is you want me to influence, please help me bring them to my attention and help me to be a tool into bringing someone to you. Into bringing someone to you. Friends, if that's your desire, and I know that it is for those who raise their hands, I want to have a special word of prayer and I invite you to stand as we pray for God who has given us all authority, all power has sent us to go everywhere and to teach all things to be able to go out and do it. Father in heaven, you have commissioned us to work together. This is not the work of one individual, but this is the work of your church, of your body, of your children. So I ask that you help us to work together to bring souls together for your cause. That we may draw them to you. And Lord, those that raise their hands, those that are willing. Lord, I ask that you impress on their mind, that you bring to their hearts, to their minds, people who they can invite, people who they can visit, people who they can begin to become more friends with. Lord. You're coming very soon and there are still plenty of people who need to know the truth about your character. So help us as we begin this year, as we begin this year, in working for you in many different aspects and in, and in many different ways, but the bottom, the common denominator, the same goal is to make disciples for you. Thank you very much, Father, for giving us access to that power and all authority. And I ask that you help us to remain on the straight and narrow way. <clears throat> and look to you for all of our source and resources. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.